today we have uh, uh, practice number five, so uh, that means uh, full pads, and we will be able to do uh, a lot of hitting. And um, I think you guys are coming out there today, if I'm not mistaken. And, and so much like we've done in the past, you know, we'll, you guys will get out there and be able to, you know, we'll stretch for about five minutes, and then we'll do special team stuff for about 15 minutes, and then we'll do that good old uh, Oklahoma drill that everybody likes to watch. And kids get fired up about it being a live contact drill. We've, we've had two pretty good practices the last two days. Uh, yesterday was more of a uh, uh, kind of a review day. Uh, the previous day, we kind of got after it a little bit. And there was a lot of energy out there, and even even a few fights, which is always fun to watch. So, um, but the guys are in a good spot. You know, they're 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 excited about where they're at, and and, um, and I know they're really looking forward to getting out there and being able to do some things. So. Uh, what we'll, we'll, after you guys leave, we'll, we'll finish with a, a team period that you know will involve a little bit of tackling for the first time. So we'll, we'll, we'll be pretty fired up to watch that. So. Then I'll take some questions. Ever think of changing the name of the Oklahoma drill? Ah, yes, that's been brought up every year. <laughs> I, I almost said something different uh, a few minutes ago. Uh, it's just it, it, it's just what everybody. I mean, that's just what it is. You know? So, nothing against uh, nothing against the great state of Oklahoma. What have you seen out of the defense so far? When when Coach Gibson was out on Saturday, he said they're throwing a lot of stuff at the defense and just kind of seeing what sticks at this point with their installation. I mean, what what have you seen out of their progress? They're they're doing a, they're doing a lot. After four days, they're doing. They're doing a lot of good stuff. Um, I thought we did too much stuff last year. I don't. I don't know exactly what you're referring to as far as you know, different, uh, different, a lot of different people being out there, a lot of different looks. Uh, I, I think we've kind of simplified our our fronts and coverages a little bit uh, from what we've done in the past couple of years, which I thought was important. Um, they, they're they're lining up quickly. We're playing a lot of different bodies. I mean, when you're we're, it's hard to wrap four deep. You know, and there's a few positions we have on defense where we're repping four deep. So, a lot of different bodies. Uh, we're, we're lining up quickly, uh, playing with a tremendous amount of ener energy, uh, which is obviously good to see. So, still a little early. You know, I mean, today's the first day that we tackle, so um, obviously we'll know more after today. Four deep, you kind of said with a smile there. I mean, how how night and day is this compared to last year from from what you're seeing in terms of defensive depth? All all positions are deeper. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're not plugging true freshmen in in the two deep. You know, the, on, the only, I guess there's two true freshmen that are in the two deep. You know, and that's Drayvon Henry and, and William Crest is taking some second team reps. So, uh, you know, whether they end up there or not, that's just night and day compared to where it's been in the past. You know, not, not just last year, but the year before. You know, and even the year before, we, we had a lot of true freshmen in the two deep. That's not the case now. Coach, uh, if it was up to you, I mean, would you rather tackle uh, earlier in camp or a little bit later? Well, you get, you know, what, what the, the recommendation is, is you get about 12 days, which I think is about right. <clears throat> you know, that's why yesterday, I mean, you know, it was more of a review day. We're going to have some more review days in the, in the coming weeks, but... Uh, preseason, preseason lasts, I guess, three and a half weeks. You know, and you get about 12 opportunities to tackle in three and a half weeks. So, um, you know, in the, in the, which is about what we did last year. You know, it's not a whole lot different than what we did last year uh, because we have a lot more bodies. You know, as opposed to a, a, a 30 play live period, it may be a 50 play live period. So, um, you know, this camp is designed to keep these guys healthy and. and you know, we'll have a lot of recovery time. We're not we're not having to put a guy out there and get 50 reps on him, you know, per day in a live situation. So the goal is to get out of camp with enough reps to be able to be in game in, in game shape, but also be healthy and, and fresh and ready to play that first game. You mentioned William Press. Do you have to make a decision on him maybe earlier than other true freshmen on what you want to do with him, just because you got to force feed him a lot of reps if he's going to play? You know, I'm not really because we got our starter. Yeah, if we didn't have our starter and we were trying to figure out, much like last year, try to rep three guys to figure out who our starter was, 
that would have hurt a true freshman like William. Uh, because we have our starter, because we have another senior in, in Paul Millard who's taking more reps than anybody around here, he knows what to do. He doesn't need the reps. He knows what to do. It, it's, it's, it's enabling us to be able to rep him. You know, and, and I don't know how he's going to continue to progress. He, he, he's talented. Uh, he, he understands, um, you know, he, he doesn't understand what we're doing, but he, under, he understands that, that, that he's going to get reps and he knows he's going to make mistakes, and it's just about learning from those mistakes. So uh, because we have a starter, because we have another senior, it, it allows us to be able to dump a bunch of reps in here to see where he can get, because nobody knows where he can get here in the next month. He doesn't know it, and we don't know it. Coach, we're certainly going to get to see some special teams tonight during the open uh, media practice portion. Uh, who do we, who do you expect uh, to uh, be vying for the return specialist on the team this year? Well, it, it's a it's a huge emphasis for us right now. We we were we led the, the the Big Twelve in punt, you know, and we got all those guys coming back. You know, Josh Lambert had a good year. We're good, you know, he's, he's going to be able to come back. Our our kickoff guys are fine. The, the return game is what's important. And, and again, I've said this every each and every year. It's not, you know, we didn't find out who our two best return guys were until about mid-season last year. You got you got Smallwood back. You got Mario back. Those two guys were, are, are very, very, very capable return guys. But it takes the other nine people in front of them to be able to work techniques. And that's where the depth comes. You know, you, you're four deep that, that linebacker or those linebacker bodies are guys that are typically the front line, you know, or the, or the second line guys uh, that, that can get good at their techniques, you know. And, 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 you know, there's been times in the past where we've had to put starters in there because those are the only capable bodies that we had. So, um, you know, but anyway, to, you know, to answer your question, Daryl Worley's a return guy and Drayvon Henry's a return guy. Um, Shelton Gibson's going to have an opportunity to, to be a return guy. Uh, Russell Shell has returned in the past. So we got a lot of good quality bodies that can do it. Uh, and those guys are going to have to compete for it. From a punt return uh, perspective, you know, Mario's back there much more comfortable. Jordan Thompson's extremely reliable. You know, so we, we got guys, you know, it, it, again, it's not just about the return guy. There's very few Tavon Austins that can make eight people miss, you know, and not block a soul and still make eight people miss and go score. Very few of those guys. So you got to be able to block people up up front. touched on it the other day, but considering that you're able to meet with guys over the summer, do you notice a few days in uh, a big difference in level of preparedness? I don't know if just the freshmen or maybe with everybody. Every, you know, everybody really. You know, it's a combination of a couple of things. It's it, it's a lot of uh, of guys that are returning. That that you know, it's funny. I was talking with Tony, I believe, in this a couple a little bit ago. Uh, watching last year's spring cutups, you weren't watching. 40% of our, our guys that, that we, you know, we added in the summer that we're, we were relying on to play. <clears throat> you know, this year we're adding, we're not, we're adding very few guys this summer. So the people that we coached in the summer, the people that we coached all summer, uh, in, in spring and all summer, are, are the same guys that we're coaching right now. So uh, m much the coaching staff is back. You know, you look at offensively, we were working with three new guys on offense last year. Um, from a coaching perspective, and that, that's not happening either. So the continuity in the chemistry is much better as a result of, of, of experienced players and, and being able to be around them a lot more than we were. Now, when that ruling came down the pipe, is that something that you thought it surprised you, or was it something that was long overdue? No, we can't, uh, as coaches, we campaigned for it for uh, several years, you know. So, you know, I guess the, the downside is, is is not a lot of – separation time between coaches and players and everybody gets sick of each other at times uh, so you got to be we, you know we didn't wear them out you know we, did, we didn't get around them too much but it, it was something that we uh, that we campaigned for and glad it, glad it went through this is getting part way into the woods but you talked about crest and force feeding him some things you've never been a guy I, I think who likes to play two quarterbacks or alternate but you've got a guy who Is there a chance that you could find a package for a guy like that and just run that package? Yeah, we're, we're not, uh, for instance, the, the, the plays that we call when Williams out there is not the same plays that we call when Quint's out there because that, that's, that's a little bit too technical for him right now, you know. So, so 
we're just running basic stuff with them right now. Uh, because again, you can overload a guy, and, and it, it, it's hard. There's a reason why Johnny Manziel redshirted. There's a reason why Jameis Winston redshirted, and those are your latest two Heisman Trophy guys. You know, so to answer your question, yes, we're already doing that. We're we're keeping a fairly basic for him. Uh, we want him to experience some success, not get too overloaded. And the more we feel like he can handle, based on how the film looks, the more that we will be able to do with him. So I, I don't know how advanced we can get. Uh, so to answer your question, yes, how big that package is, I don't know. I don't could, know yet. Could you see creating a package, though? Oh, yeah, I'd like want, to. That you Absolutely. wanted to actually <coughs> use, not have to use because you're a Correct. Yeah, yeah I, would, I would like to do that if, if he continues to progress because I think he's a pretty good player. Uh, but again, I don't want to put too much on his plate. So I, if, if that package doesn't look very good, then we won't do it. Uh, if he proves over the next three weeks uh, that, that, that those specific things that he can do uh, well, if he could do things better than what Clint can do with Clemson there, then we'd be more than happy to do that. What about your uh, downfield passing game? Are you seeing more converted to stuff? Yeah, yeah, we are. You know, Clint, Clint's, uh, Clint's doing pretty well at that. You know, he, he's he's doing well at it. Mario and uh, and Kevin are light years ahead of where they were last year, technique-wise. You know, because we're able to get real specific on technique, because we're not teaching them what to do all the time. Uh, and then the, the the timing and the you know the continuity between Clint and those guys. Is, is is light years ahead of where it was last year. So a lot goes into that. It takes more than just a fast kid to run downfield and a quarterback to be able to throw the ball down there. I mean, it takes more than that. It takes technique and it takes practice. And those guys are much more on the same page than they were at any point last year. Sam, often, often teams open with a trap, trap game, a team that they should be, and the coach may have to even get them up for, for the opener. You've got a, the exact opposite kind of problem, I guess, uh, in that your team certainly would be up for oh, oh, for Alabama. You have to be careful uh, that they don't peak too early during this and, and, and to get them ready for that that Saturday in particular. Yeah, I doubt we'll be overlooking that one. Um, <laughs> you know, that, my 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 job gets harder after that game happens, regardless if we win, if we lose. My job gets harder after that game. You know, and we haven't talked a lot about our schedule. It's up. They know who we're playing. You know, uh, the, the the motivation is probably different. You know, that that's going to be a, a, a huge game and big atmosphere, and won't have to say a whole lot about that. But you know, how you respond from that is is is, is probably going to a little bit more. Uh, uh, you know, the coaching is going to have to come into play a little bit at that point. Does Alabama being <laughs> Alabama work for them? That they intimidate people or against them because they've got Florida on there. Uh, we play we play lots of good teams in the Big Twelve. You know that that you know they're they're a storied program, but you know so is Oklahoma and so is Texas and Oklahoma State's pretty good and TCU's pretty good and Texas Tech's pretty good and Kansas State's pretty good. The list goes on. I mean every game is big, so uh, I don't think our guys will be very intimidated by it. You know we'll be ready to play and those guys will go in there and they'll be they'll be they'll be excited about that opportunity. With the rankings that came out last week, you probably don't care about anybody other than yourself right now, but I think there are three top ten teams. You've got your schedules that fuel those fire at this point in the year. You're probably not quivering yet. You know, facing the next week. We haven't talked about it. Don't pay any attention to the rankings. Don't pay any attention to what they, you know, what they think about us at this point either. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll start talking about the first game about two weeks out. You know, and start preparing for the first uh, game about two weeks out. You know, I, I don't have to say anything about it. Those guys know what the schedule is. You know, we play in one of the most challenging conferences in the country, and arguably have the toughest schedule in the country when you add a couple of those non-conference games. So uh, they they know that they know the they they know that, and they view that as an opportunity to be able to uh, have a pretty good year. How often do you talk about finishing close games? Because since that was a thing last year, do you talk about that a lot. Oh, well, a ton. Yeah, we focused on that. That's one of our goals. You know, we got a couple of goals that we talked about in here with uh, the coaches and the players, and one of them is is to get better at finishing. You know, that that was frustrating last year. No, it wasn't any more frustrating than it was for myself and the team when you sit in that locker room after losing an overtime game 
where you, you are losing a 10-point fourth quarter lead. Uh, so yes, we have focused on that since January. We do, we've ran specific drills. Not only have we focused and talked about it, we've done specific drills where we work on finishing things, finishing periods, finishing practices, finishing reps. It's something coaches say a good bit around here. Maybe the question is, how tired, how tired are you of talking about those games? better than getting your ass kicked. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're, in, we're, in, we're in a good conference. I mean, there's going to be close games. That's, that's, that's the beauty of, of the situation that we're in with the Big 12. So uh, we're, we're going to be prepared for, for, you know, very, you know, for close games. We're going to be in them. We need to use our experience and the things that we've been through uh, and, and the motivation to be able to close those games out. On Saturday, Shannon compared last year to the Orange Bowl season. He said, really, when you look at it, it's not, you can make the argument that it's not that different other than the close games broke your way. Yeah. Um, matter of having those young guys in key positions last year, I mean, do you, do you see the similarities there? Well, it, yeah, there was a lot of close games that year, too. You know, we, we had some experienced guys that, and, and some talented guys that were able to close those games out the appropriate way. You know, so... You know, we have we had young guys last year that weren't able to close those games out in the the appropriate way. You can blame, I mean, I've taken the blame for all of it, but you can blame it on the lack of continuity with coaching staffs or turnover, whatever it is. Uh, it just the ball didn't bounce our way and we didn't close it out. We're using that as motivation, you know, with, with developing more camaraderie, with with uh, having more continuity with with staff and players and systems. Uh, to where when we're in those situations again, which we will be, uh, regardless if it's the starters in there, if it's backups in there for a variety of reasons, we need to get in there and close them out. And you mentioned your defense doing fewer things, and I presume you'll be getting better at that stuff before spending it um, offensively. All the things you can run, you can run the ball inside, outside, power stuff. Is, is there a label you would put on what you want to do or what you're good at, or, or is it going to be kind of... <clears throat> Yeah, we're we're kind of we're still figuring that out. You know, we we've simplified things offensively from last year too. Last year we were searching and searching and searching and searching and changing and changing. Uh, we we've we've narrowed our package down offensively as well. Um, you know, to just try to get good at the specific things that we need to get good at. I don't know exactly what our identity is going to be. Last year it turned out to be, you know, we had to kind of rely on the, the the run game more than I have in the past because that's just kind of what our strength was. Uh, you know, I want to be multiple. I want to be able to run the ball. I want to be able to throw the ball. Um, you know, and I, I think we're on track to being able to be good at both of them. You know, uh, Coach Snyder the other day was uh, comparing Wendell Smallwood to Charles Singh. <clears throat> Would you say that? You know, that's a very much so. Yeah, they're they're very 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 similar. You know, we we could kind of tell that last year a little bit and. I've made reference to this. I mean, Charles is going to be a great pro. It's re the, the reason he was a second, the second back taken is because he was, he was versatile. You know, cause, because they're, they're wanting to do that in the NFL as well, be able to have guys that can run between the tackles but also be a receiver. Uh, he, he left his mark here with the younger guys. And Wendell followed him and learned from him, and they do possess the same skill set. So hopefully we you know, have the same production. I think we can replace Charles with a combination of Wendell and, and, and Russell Shell and Bowie and Garrison and, and, and Dreamus and all that. So, um, you know, I think we'll be better at back because we have more bodies. Dana, Coach DeForest the other day was really talking up Dayron Wilson and his role filling in so far. How have you seen him develop and how he's been doing? Yeah, he, he's, been, he's been doing great. He, uh, you know, defense uh, Saturday after. Uh, you know, defense closed Saturday's practice out by getting after offense pretty good. And Dayron made two or three plays at the end. He made an unbelievable interception and, and, and had a tackle for loss. Uh, has stepped in for K.J. Dillon since K.J.'s been out. K.J. will be back in a few days, but has stepped in there and given us good quality reps. Uh, and I, I rewarded him with the scholarship on Saturday after practice as well. So uh, he, he's, he's going to be a good one for us. If you, felt, if you guys have changed the summer, coaches with the campaign and all that stuff. Is there a way to tinker with this preseason part? Did you have to share practices with those schools? I don't think you could do scrimmages necessarily, but <clears throat> something more live than one against No, I, I think you just got – I don't know. That's never going to happen. I can assure you of that. Um, I, I just think you got to continue to build your roster. You, 
you got to continue to focus on building your roster to the point to where it's at where it is right now. We've got 105 guys out there, you know, that are that understand what we're trying to do, and so that when when you have depth like that, you can you can practice more. You know, I, I've I've been in the situation where I've went into camp with about nine healthy old linemen, or or four healthy corners. Uh, you, that makes it tough to practice. You know, so because our depth's good, we're able to play a lot of ball. Um, and you just got that's got to be a focus each and every year. You know, you're going to lose guys to graduation. I think we've got 20 seniors at this point. There was a time where I thought that number may be about eight, uh, but we, we have upped it to about 20. And, and, you know, when those guys leave us, which that's just college football, you need to replace them with guys and, and get them coached up. One of those guys who would have been part of the would have been uh, Devon Snow. Yeah, he, uh, best shape he's ever been in. You know, he's 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 not walking around with the red jersey. Uh, he he's out there practicing. He he's probably our most valuable uh, special teams player at this point. I mean, he's on every spot. He's on six special teams. I mean, he's on every one of them. Uh, probably end up being on more, but uh, you know, just because he's he's a good football player that's now healthy and knows this is his last opportunity to play ball. So that you, you take a guy like that, and there's only, I think, five fifth-year seniors in our program right now. Um, but you take a guy like that, and you, 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 the, the higher that number goes, the better football team you're going to have because they can do a lot of different things, and it means a lot to them. Any update on your, your offensive tackles after four days? Uh, same thing, you know, Panky and Marquise, are, they're, they're the same, you know, and then Marcel and Sylvester are young guys that just need need reps, you know, so uh, I, we're, we're really looking for the third tackle right now. I mean, we've got our two starters. Those guys need to uh, continue to get better, and hopefully they can hold up. You know, they, they, neither one of those guys have been counted on to play a full game. So, you know, I think they're ready. I know they're ready. Uh, we need a third tackle in case something happens. What about the new kids that aren't here yet? McCrary, anything no new? No change on any, on any of those four at this point. Okay. Dan, what's Hutton James' situation? Uh, he's uh, he's just going through some things that he needs to get worked out. So he's he's here. He's just not in camp. He's here, not in camp. Yeah, he's just he's just not, he's not ready to go yet. I'm evaluating his you know his his progress and what what was he's he's enrolled for school for fall, so I anticipate. I anticipate him uh, uh, being ready to go once school starts. Okay. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thank you, guys. <clears throat>